Hi guys, Holly Hobby coming to you today talking about gardening. I am currently recording this in the month of March, which is the perfect time to get your seedlings in the ground if you know exactly what kind of climate you're in. We are in zone five here in Colorado, which means that I really have to look at the packets in order to prepare the seedlings properly. In some cases, you'll see that um, germination time can take seven to 10 days. In other cases, it could take up to 20 days. So when your seed starts, you wanna make sure you've got it set up for success. And there's a couple key points that I'm gonna be showing you today to make that possible. For those of you who have ever tried seeding uh, your plants, it can be quite the process. Uh, so starting off with day one, you wanna get yourself organized. So I'm gonna show you a couple things in order to make that happen. So I've got four, I've got this little, try raise board. Um, I've, I'm gonna be having four different cycles of seeding. So basically what happens is you, you prepare the seeding soil, which, which is different than potting soil and which is different than the dirt that you would put for your actual garden outside. The seeding soil has certain nutrients that are specific to seed sprouting and specific fertilizers and, and such. Um, I believe in using the um, as natural as possible, going organic as natural as possible um, to try to get rid of all the chemicals in, in the seeds that I've started. In fact, I even like to purchase seeds if possible from other gardeners who have also collected seeds and saved them over time. So, one of the things that you want to be sure to look at is the packaging. Um, so yes, noting I've got the four growing cycles. I've actually organized myself in a really fun way. Those of you who like to organize yourselves might geek out with this. Um, but basically what I did is I, I put together this binder and it's got a list of all of the different seeds that I'm going to be planting. Um, most importantly, it's noted, noting the plant type the time of year that the plant can actually start growing in the ground, um, how many days to germination, which means when it sprouts up and it starts to get two to three leaves, then days to harvest. This is important because, you know, looking at the list, who would have thought that parsley could take 60 to 80 days to, to fully be ready for harvest? Um, you can actually harvest the duration of that time, but once that 80 day marker is gonna hit, you're not gonna have any fresh stuff. So you can clip as you're going along the way and I'll show you some different techniques with that. But pretty much after that last marker, that's the last of that fruit or plant that you're gonna be able to harvest. So it's, it's good to notate it. What I've also included here are some supplies such as highlighters, pens, dry erase. I've got some plant labels. We're going to be uh, making sure that we label everything because you, you don't want to plant things close to each other that don't belong together. So um, in fact, so starting off at the very, very top, I've got artichoke. And artichoke is, is okay to plant after the first frost, but it's going to tell you when it's okay to plant it in the name. In fact, some of these, so I've got my cycles as April to May, May to June, June to August and August to September. So some things you can plant early on that prefer cooler temperatures, but once that summer hits, they're gonna be done until you hit the cooler months again, and then you can get a second harvest. So that's the idea, friends, is to try to, to balance everything out as much as possible, not plant it all in your seed preparation right at the very beginning, because you're gonna want to get the most out of those seeds throughout the entire season. And one thing you'll note, I mean, I've got three different kinds of peppers that I'm gonna be planting. And two of them, in fact, are only good in the hottest months. So planting June to August is ideal. But one of them is a combination plant and that is best to harvest or best to plant April to May. So really looking at those seeds. I've also got this binder um, it's kind of a filing cabinet for me of my seeds, and it's marked off by the first seed, second, third, fourth. I've also got direct sow and indoors. So some of the things I'm going to be planting this season are indoors. Some you want to sow directly into the ground. And kind of the best rule of thumb with that is 
you can start anything inside, but not all plants are gonna transplant well. And so you wanna read the notes on the package very specifically. In fact, if it's a big seed, you want to sow that directly into the ground. And one of the best tips that I got over the last couple of weeks about sowing directly into the ground is you can actually set it, uh, speed up the process a little bit by putting it in a humidifier space, which means you remember in school when we had like those Ziploc baggies and you took a paper towel and you got the paper towel wet and the seeds started to, to sprout in the baggie. That is something you can do for those seeds that you want to go directly into soil if you want to get them started off a, a, a week faster. Um, so I'm going to just take a look here at uh, the first little batch, just pull a random beet. I'm going to pick beet. So on the packaging itself, it should give you some detailed information. It's not super crisp and clear, but in the upper right hand side, it says it's a full sun plant. 50 days to harvest, half inch deep in the ground, and you want to thin it out at about three inches. Then it talks about the map. The map on these packets is amazing. You, you have to know what zone you're in. Um, when it shows the map, it'll give you a very nice picture of the different types. So this particular plant for where I'm located can be planted between the months of April to June and August to September. So I'm gonna be able to get a double harvest out of this guy and um, that'll be great. Now I'm gonna just read to you what it says on here. Um, this is a Jupiter beet. Deep red beets have tender, delicious, fresh harvest early for baby beets. Sow in well-worked soil after danger of frost in spring. Some will say after danger of frost. Some will say four weeks before the last frost. So you'll want to look at your farmer's almanac for the history of the previous few years to see when that frost actually was. And I know this seems like a lot of work, but it's really, really worth it. In Colorado, in zone five, um, pretty much the, the best bang for my buck is right around St. Patrick's Day week is when I would start my seeds. Then right around uh, Memorial Day is when I would plant. Some people like to plant on Mother's Day, but we tend to get a couple of additional storms after that. So I don't find Mother's Day to be the best time, but to each their own. Um, there are different techniques that I will show you for um, protecting your plants as you're going through the change of seasons. So um, keep an eye out for that. But in this particular case, those are the months that are gonna be best for me. The plants are gonna be basically dormant after I harvest in June slash July, and then replant in that space August to September. So in addition, I wanted to show you some of the growing trays. So you don't have to go out and buy anything fancy, but I do recommend some sort of a growing tray that has holes in it with a tray of water to, to keep the water in. Um, if your home is a temperature, is lower temperatures like 65, 67 degrees, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a seed warmer for the bottom of that tray to keep your seeds warm so that they, they thrive the best. In this particular case, my home is about 70, 72. So um, I, I love that temperature. It's perfect for me and my family. So I'm probably not gonna need a gardening mat. Um, it's basically like a heating pad, but not made for seeds and is, is water protected. So um, first things first is you would fill these holes with your soil. And then we're gonna water it down really, really nice. What you don't wanna do is some of these seeds are gonna be so microscopic that they kind of look like dust. So you don't wanna put the dirt in, put the seed in, then water it. Because what's gonna happen is the water is gonna make everything kind of sprout out. Then you're gonna have some blank spaces. So if the water has given the soil some moisture, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to be able to put the seed in there and guarantee it's gonna stay safe in that space. The other thing that, that gardeners recommend here is to water this tray, not this one. Because when those roots come in, it's gonna be sitting in this nice little tray and the water can settle right there. You don't wanna to water too much from the top because again, that shifts everything around. So if you can water from the bottom. 
the first seven to 10 days are going to be crucial as far as the time of things. So what you're going to want to have is some sort of a covering that fits right on top of your container. And the coverings will usually have some sort of an opening that you can adjust to bring in air or not. Um, so as things are growing, you want to let them have some air if possible to get the strongest stems. And those of you who've planted seeds before have known that like the seeds are going to come up, they're going to be a little stringy. And that's not a strong enough plant to be able to transplant into something else and then later into the ground. So in order to give the best success for your plant, you're going to want to have a fan on low um, in your growing space. I call it my uh, grow room, um, but it's basically just a little storage space with lights. And I'm going to show you that here in a moment. But you want to have a fan going so that way they're used to growing with wind. When that happens, those stems are super strong and will be able to withstand the, the shock of being transported into another, another container. So when I talk about that germination period, seven to 10 days or 20 days, whatever that looks like, I mentioned specifically that that stringy plant is going to have some leaves that are starting to grow from it. That's a very important time um, because they're ready to now move into something bigger. And this is a very important step to take because if they don't move into something bigger and you take them right from that little space, all the roots are gonna be bunched up underneath and it's not gonna have the most opportunity for success. So you'll wanna make sure that you have additional bigger pots that you can put things in and it can be more than one plant of the same kind in the same pot, but it needs to be bigger than the little square. Some, pot, some plants, which you'll notice um, as I start planting things, you'll see that I'm gonna be using specific pods or biodegradable pots. Um, that's because those plants are not going to be, do well with transplanting at all. Some plants need to be just sown in directly, no transplanting, but if I wanna get them started, so that way they've got optimal success and are strong enough for outdoors, then I wanna make sure that I start them off in these other pods. So you're gonna see a variety of different um, methods and materials that I'm using for different kinds of seeds. And also I have a hydroponic growing system. It's called the Tower Garden. Um, I don't get any uh, compensation for that. It's just something I've, I've used over the years. And um, I, I do like to experiment with growing things in just water instead of just dirt. So um, you will see, I'm gonna use some techniques with that as well. And so in addition to the fan, your covers, your tray, and then the tray holder, you're going to want to also make sure that you have everything labeled properly, but then grow lights. Grow lights can be fairly expensive. You, you have ranges. Um, biggest thing with grow lights is the blues, the reds, and now in recent years, greens uh, with the LED. If you've got, if you've got a grow light at all that you've used for, um, for other things, uh, you know, using a fish tank light, unless it's LED, isn't going to be the most ideal. But I'm not asking you to go out and spend a ton of money. I've seen grow lights that have massive grid boards with LED lights, and it's super cool and super bright. Um, what I use is a lower grade um, grow light, no brand in particular. I've actually got three different ones from three different places, and they all came from garden centers. Uh, the big thing for me was I want to look at the length. And with the size of these guys, what you're going to see is I've got so many that I actually have to, I'm going to be turning them each day so that there's equal light and distribution and growth and no one plant is just going to be tilted over to a side. So when you're, you're thinking about seeding, this is an investment in time and nurturing these plants. And you know, I am I am someone who's a real big fan of song to plants. I talk to my plants. I want to make sure that they're doing well. I want to make sure I'm turning them, making sure they're not flopping over, that they're as strong as possible. Because when I go to transplant them into their next pots, they're going to start to acclimate with some of the outdoors. So every day, I'm going to take them, put them in the greenhouse on my patio, which is super tiny, but it's it still serves the purpose of giving them a lot of warmth. 
then bringing them back in overnight because the nighttime temperatures are just going to be too cold for them to stay out there unless I had a heater dedicated to just that greenhouse. You will also see I will have a, um, my, we have a garden shed. So some of the plants will be moved into the garden shed also to get used to the temperature, um, the changes of temperature, they call it hardening. So um, you're basically ensuring the success of your stock by making sure that it's able to acclimate to all the variance in temperature before you put it in the ground. Um, because the ground has to be a certain temperature. And I'm gonna talk about that in later videos as we start to take temperatures of, of ground. For the most part, the, the ground temperature must be over 40 degrees and you have to test it in the morning. So it's good to get a garden thermometer as well as a garden pH indicator. So you know the total success of these plants and what you're looking at. It's a lot of information, huh? I wanted to be able to share all that with you because that's how I'm organizing myself this season. Um, you know, even my, my grandfather taught me uh, three seeds in every hole. And that's actually, I've learned over time, is not the case either. That he said one for the birds, one for the worms, and one for me. And in fact, some seeds have multiple, like a beet, for example, it kind of looks like a kidney stone. It's a spiky, tiny little thing. Inside of that, there's actually three other seeds. So you wouldn't want to plant a total of nine seeds in one hole. It would just be the one hard one that has the three inside. Some of the packages will tell you plant two in each spot or three in each spot or one in each spot. And what that, what that helps with is the overcrowding situation because you don't want to nurture these plants up, watch them start to grow, and now they're all fighting for the same nutrients. We want them to be able to come up strong. So we will be pruning off the, uh, the plants that just aren't quite as big or quite as strong. So buckle up my friends, I'm gonna show you my little grow room and I'm excited to walk through this new season of gardening with you. So here you'll see how my setup is. I've essentially got three shelves all with grow lights. And because of the size of these and how these shelves are positioned, um, you'll notice the grow lights are a little bit longer. Um, so I've got additional shelving material that I can use for other things. And what you'll see is I am gonna plant other things and use like trays. So that way we can do the same kind of sustainability with the water output. So it doesn't flood over, destroying the property, etc. What you'll notice here is they are hanging above. You wanna make sure that you can lower and raise your lights depending on the size of the plant. Because of the germination time of the plants that I'm, I'm starting off with, you know, looking at a seven to 10 day germination period, the, the height I found last year was absolutely perfect for what we're wanting to do. And it's positioned in such a way where the light's just gonna project out here. It does have some warmth, which is great. Also adding to that temperature that we talked about for uh, the plants to have material overnight. I have all of this plugged into one of the, those timers, outdoor timers. So it's actually a weatherproof timer. I'm gonna have it set to let the plants rest for six to eight hours every single day. So the lights will actually automatically shut off with that programming. And as I mentioned before, I want to make sure that I've got the highest success for all the plants. So I am just going to be turning these each day to make sure that everyone gets equal, equal light and equal warmth. So some of the things that I mentioned as far as planting, um, there's a lot of different mediums. I'm going to be using some of these grow containers. These are recyclable. They're basically made out of not the plastic egg cartons, but the regular egg carton material that's biodegradable. And I'm also going to be using some of this material, which you'll see it's like a moss, if you will, but it's intended for tower gardens and hydroponic gardens. 
So I'm gonna get these soaking wet, put the seeds right inside. And then there's a material very similar to like pebble rocks that I'm going to just put right on top of that. I also have this really cool rapid rooter plant starter material. These are squishy. They're a dark brown. It says great for soil and hydroponic applications. Excellent air to water ratio encourages root branching. So yeah, you can't really see the picture here too well. There we go. So that's essentially how the plants are gonna look before I plant them in the ground. This bag, particular bag has 50 in it. Over the season, when we harvested our potatoes last year, cause those are root-based potatoes, there were some smaller ones and I actually kept them in this box over season and they've already started to root. So this will be perfect for planting in the ground. Potatoes, you can actually, if you don't wanna use potatoes that are from the grocery store because they've been cleaned and this, the eyes won't seed. So with these particular plants, we're just going to, um, it requires one seedling for each root for the potatoes to go. So we're gonna actually cut these. And I've also got some bigger ones that we're gonna use as well for when we do potatoes. Those can actually be planted four weeks before the last frost. So we're gonna, we're gonna also do some videos here where we're talking about the things that can be planted for them. I mentioned seeding mix and it will particularly say seeding mix. This happens to be black gold. Again, I don't get affiliate from anything, but I really like the black gold brand. And it's, so this, this will be nice. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just fill these holes, get them wet and then plant some seeds. Another thing you'll want to have with you as far as gardening supplies is a watering can. And because I'm gonna be watering from the base instead of from the top, I don't have to have a sprayer, like a, a misty sprayer. Uh, that's really, really good to have if you have one of those kind of flowering pots for a solution like this, if you have to water from up above. Okay, so the very first one we're gonna start with is the cocoa brick. And uh, this particular brand is called Cocoa Grow. Again, no affiliate, uh, but it's basically a core fiber. And everything's going to be contained in this brick. Already on the bottom side, I poked holes into it so that it can drain nicely into this tray. Um, that will help avoid mold as well. So I'm just making some small cuts into the top here. I'm going to be putting in here some tomato seeds, particularly cherry tomatoes. This one's for my dad. He had wanted me to do some starters for him and he wants to grow peppers and cherry tomatoes. So that's what we're going to do here. And so once I put the seeds in, well, I'm gonna get everything wet and then I'm gonna put the seeds inside and it's gonna expand because right now it's just a tight brick of coconut fibers. And so um, eventually once it's past germination, I'll be able to give them some nutrients as well. To prepare the other areas, we've got the tray. Um, these ones are the biodegradable casings. Uh, these green ones are the ones I talked about for the hydroponic garden. And these ones are so fun. So they're just a squishy, squishy material. And let's see, what is it made out of anyhow? Peat moss. The air to water ratio within the plug matrix promotes root growth vigorous roots make stronger plants. So they are already fairly damp. I'm gonna soak the plugs in water. It says you can also do a mild nutrient solution to rehydrate 
place the cedar cutting in the center of a hole to plug one. So that's what, it, what we're gonna do when we bring it outside. The last option I'm going to do is the seating mix in this tray. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and get that opened up. I did mention that we have like a rock just to show you it's a granular material and it's sort of shiny, um, but it's just gonna sit on top and protect the plants from any weather. I'm not sure if there's nutrients in it. it, didn't come with any specific description, but that's what's gonna go in there. And to just start off with this black gold, I'm just gonna start dumping a little bit in and then we're gonna spread out accordingly. You might be wondering, why is she doing that inside? Well, I have a broom and a dust pan. But I want all of this to be in my space. So it's a little windy out. I can always sweep things up. We don't want to fill everything up too, too much. Just enough for, I mean, because right now it's got lots of oxygen in it. And so it's rather fluffy. But once it gets the moisture, it'll compact itself down. Then I'll be able to pat it down. Now, um, there are some differing opinions about patting things down. Uh, definitely, if you're sowing your seeds in your garden, it is not necessary at all to pat things down with your foot. I mean, you're just gonna damage the plant. Um, here, just a gentle press is more than enough. And I still wanna be able to see the dividers, if you will. So, almost have too much in here. So we can move some to these guys. And you can see there's a lot of nutrients contained within this particular mixture. Uh, you know, the companies do a really, really good job of making sure that there's as much nutrients as possible. And that's why they wanna make sure that you're not using potting soil for your seedlings because it's not going to, the potting soil has nutrients in it, but it's not going to have the same that you need for your seeds to start off. You'll notice, see how the, the water is making the soil kind of pop up? That's what we're talking about, friends. If you had put seeds in first, they'd be floating all about as the water settles. This is my first time using this brick, so I'm real curious to see this process and how it works. It's fascinating because it's also absorbing from the bottom and I can hear it starting to expand in this packaging. You can hear it on the bottom, see? Okay, so. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up seeds. You can use pencil. Just note that if you're gonna use these same tags outside, pencil's not gonna work really well for you. So in reading this, it said, the cherry tomatoes are gonna to take seven to 10 days for germination. Celery is 10 to 21 days. The onion can be planted early spring to September. 10 to 14 days for germination. The carrots should be planted between April to May, uh, 10 to 15 days germination. And the beets are cold season, so March to June and August to September, seven to 14 days germination. So you don't wanna throw out your packets. You want to make sure to keep them so you can always look back at the growing information that's contained on the back. These little seeds are going to be super tiny. So in the case of this one, I'm going to go ahead and do two seeds for each hole. And that's the nuts and bolts of getting started with your seeds. Have fun with it all. Document everything so you can keep track along the way. Um, you can convert any space into a, a garden seeding grow room. And uh, so you'll see I've got my furnace, I've got my water jugs. <laughs>
Um, but most importantly, I have my shelving here with my lights. So try out different mediums, have fun with it and um, reward yourself at the end because it's gonna be a really fun process the whole way as you're watching these seedlings sprout. Cheers to your success, my friends. Be awesome in all things and let's get dirty in the garden. Bye.